Okay, if I could have your attention, please. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to... Shh, please, ladies. Thank you. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be starting the section on electricity. We're going to work our way into... Gentlemen, ladies, have a seat. Thank you. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be working through all of E1.1 today. And it's actually a considerably large activity. It's going to take most of the lecture, so it's important that, that we stay on task. What you'll be doing in lab is you will be doing the remainder of the E1 series, 1.2 through 6. And what you'll be examining is you'll be examining the behaviors of, we call this whole unit, batteries and bulbs. Okay, so you'll be playing with batteries and bulbs, pieces of wire, trying to figure out what's going on, developing a whole series of rules, and perceiving the regularities, identifying and discussing the regularities, and developing yourselves a set of rules to describe the behaviors of very simple, what we call simple electric circuits. Okay, and that's what you'll be doing in lab this week, in class today, and we may require part of class on Tuesday to finish it up. Okay, that's our first examination of electricity. We'll go on to look at other kinds of electricity. We'll look a little bit at static electricity. We'll be looking a little bit at magnetics, electromagnetics. Okay, but in order to start all this, we start off with a very simple but very profound series of activities called batteries and bulbs. It turns out that there's some very basic phenomenon that you have to wrestle with that are not trivial. Okay, when I first started teaching using batteries and bulbs, I couldn't believe that I was spending all this time on such apparently simple phenomena. Okay, but it's actually a very complex phenomena. It's very rich in terms of learning. And uh, picking this up early makes all of electricity work much better. Anyway, so what you're going to be doing today is you're going to be working through E1.1. Now, E1.1 starts out asking you to draw how you believe it's possible to light a bulb using a battery and a piece of wire. What you're going to do is you're going to draw that, you're going to discuss it, you're going to refine your drawings, and once you have drawings and a written description of how it's going to work and, and how you're going to make it go, once you've got that prediction, you're going to show it to me, and I will give you a battery and a bulb and a piece of wire. I'm going to spend almost all of class on this, okay? It's not, not trivial at all, okay? But you don't get this stuff until you've done it. You, until you've done the prediction, and you get one piece of wire. You guys are all going to be smarter than MIT students by the time I'm done with you, at least in this one area, <laughs> okay? You know, they spent a fortune to go to MIT, too. You guys are going to get the benefit of the uh, lower Arizona tuition. Anyway. You will get this in class, and then you will light it up and try and figure out what the heck is going on and what are the necessary conditions for lighting it, and then a description of what you think is going on in this particular arrangement. Okay? And I will be going around talking to the groups. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the I think that makes sense. I don't see any other way it could work. What I was thinking is that because you need the end. You need both. Yeah. Okay. You both have to get up. I did. I know it's right now. Are you just going to write that? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
the wire. And then it's just connected. It just touches like the bottom. The wire goes here to here stuff. Yeah, because that's... I don't know, would it? No. That wouldn't have anything to do with it. You never know. I don't know. I mean, it's an idea. So it goes like that. Yeah. And you can do it on the other side too. Around. Yeah, like the bulb on the negative side. Yeah, yeah that could work too. Like, I don't know, I think probably what you said was probably the best. 
It's a continuous, so it's going to go up and touch this part, this and, um, yeah. and since yeah. it's going to be this, see how, see how I do it right here? It's kind of like easier to see because like, like, this is how this is supposed to be. Can I see it? Yeah. Well, that's a good idea there. What? Yes, you're one. And your bulb, so that part of the loop is the filament, and part of the loop is the battery. Any arrangement, whether it's with two wires, three wires, nine wires, one wire, if you use, I use the back of the scribbler for a wire up here, it's just got to have this closed path. Now, some of you have been asking me some questions about the light bulb itself. What happens here is, this wire is incredibly fine. It's much finer than the hair on your head. Okay, and they're going around to look at. But what happens is in order to pass current or energy or electrons, and we're going to get into all those things, but in order for electricity to move through that, it's squeezed down quite narrow. Okay? And when that happens, this thing gets white hot. They got thin filaments in your toaster made of a different metal. They go red hot. You think of an electric range, the top of your range goes red hot. Okay? Somehow when electricity is made to squeeze through spaces, and we will develop these ideas, you can get this heat out of the situation. Now, inside a bulb it gets extremely hot. It's around 5,000 degrees Celsius. Okay? It's one of the hottest phenomena you'll ever encounter in your everyday life, unless you weld. If you weld, you can get higher temperatures. Okay? And what happens is inside this thing, there's a gas that's spilled in the, in the um, bulb itself, mostly to keep oxygen away. Metal, in the presence of oxygen, it would immediately corrode into rust and all drop away. Okay, so be, you know, this, this would be all over in, in, in a quick flash if this bulb here were shattered or broken in any way. And if you ever break a bulb, say a headlamp on your car, It'll go really yellow. That's because the filament inside is oxidizing.